Okay. So he's gone. Yep. Rest in peace. If that's in the cards. Dumb son of a bitch. Wait. That was romantic, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it may have been the gayest moment in the show uh, today. <laughs> Hey man, I'm just carrying this around with me just because it smells like you and I, I love you so much. So anyway, here's your jacket back. Sometimes uh, when you were away, I just, you know, got in front of a mirror and put it on when I was angry. We were crying, laughing at how ridiculous the fact that I had his jacket nicely folded in the back of the car. And not the Impala, a stolen car. And I'm like, what? <laughs> there, was, there was no reason for that jacket to be in the back, in the trunk of that, just no reason. It, but it was just one of those things where it's, it's a crucial part of the story that needs to happen. Misha said he, he uh, don't like to know uh, what Dean had done with the trench coat. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, wearing uh, the trench coat while he's naked. And... Yeah, I don't want to know what Dean did with that trench coat. You know, it's and, and why it was just folded so I don't know. And that was another thing too because I had it full. I'm like, Dean wouldn't fold this up like his, you know. It's a damn coat. I get the, the, the you know, the, the, sim, the symbol of it, what it represents, and it's, it's, it's Cass's coat, and this and that, but, you know, it, it was so, <laughs> it was so perfectly folded with like the, with like the, the, the tie and the collar, and Bob's like, can you present it, like, you know, so, so we can see what it is, and I'm like, no, no, I can't. Oh God! Something like I, I guess I maybe always thought that you were going to come back or something, or something like that. Yeah, but there was something. stuff that was written in that scene that was really tough to say. When you say it out loud, it's like, wow! <laughs> I would never say that to another human being, <laughs> especially a man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the line as it was written, I don't know it exactly verbatim, but this, the the sort of paragraph that you had to say was something. Yeah, yeah. It was something like. I've been cuddling up with this every night um, so that I could smell you. I mean, it was really essentially like the dialogue would have perfect would have gone perfectly along with me doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bob Singer, who was directing the episode, was like it, we had him in tears when we simply just said, "Bob, allow us to read this scene aloud to you, <laughs> and you tell us what you think." And we simply just read the lines, and he just folded and started laughing hysterically. And, and then we proceeded to spend like the next hour and a half trying to that figure out. That was tough out. to make that scene. And we really, yeah, the three of us tried to put our minds together on set. Trying to have, but how, how can we change this around to make it, to make it more believable between these two characters? And um, I don't even remember what it ended up being when two men are standing opposite each other saying, I guess I just really hoped you would come back someday. <laughs> There's no real way to make that like... You know what I mean, brother? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you're back, so, uh, good to see you. And I think I almost did it like that. It was like, yeah, I guess, I, guess, I guess a part of me just made me thought you yeah. might come back. I don't know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Think, here's, just, like, here's your stupid coat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I've kept folded and carried with me. You know? <laughs> yeah. And Bob's like, could you present it so we can see the collar and make sure that we know that it's I'm like, yeah, because I would have it here anyway. 